Hello, and thank you for joining us today for the Hydrogen Jobs Plan Request for Proposal Industry Briefing. I'm Gemma Temby from the Office of Hydrogen Power South Australia, and I'll be facilitating today's discussion. So I'll introduce our presenters. Sam Crafter is the Chief Executive of, the, of Hydrogen Power South Australia, which is overseeing the design and delivery of the Hydrogen Jobs Plan. Sam will be leading our session today. Paul Gazarowski from BDO Australia will provide advice on probity. Philip Dowsett is joining us from the Office of Industry Advocate and will provide information on South Australia's industry participation policy. And lastly, Eddie Iver, who's currently off screen, will provide us with advice on South Australia's Industry Capability Network and advice on how uh, this network can support proponents seeking to engage local suppliers. So just moving on to our acknowledgement of country. As guests here on Ghana land, we acknowledge everything this agency does impacts on Aboriginal country, the sky, the sea, its people and their spiritual and cultural connection which has existed since the first sunrise. We also acknowledge the Bangala people as the traditional owners of the land in and around the Wyala area. Our responsibility is to share our collective knowledge, recognise the difficult history, respect the relationships made over time and create a stronger future. We are ready to walk, learn and work together. Okay, so just on to some housekeeping. So we'll speak today for approximately 30 to 40 minutes and then there'll be an opportunity for questions. So during the Q&A segment, please use the chat function on the Zoom uh, platform to ask a question. Your question will only be seen by us as a facilitator and you will not be identified during any answer. Questions that cannot be answered today during the session will be taken on notice and published. So this session will be recorded for probity purposes and are made and made available online following this session. Okay, so just a run through of what we'll discuss today. Uh, so Paul will speak next on probity. We'll then uh, Sam will provide a project overview. Uh, Phil will talk about the tailored industry participation plan. Eddie will speak on the industry capability network. We'll then go back to Sam, who talks on land options, technology, indicative modelling operating objectives, commercial strategy, evaluation, submission requirements, and then we jump to questions. So Paul, it's over to you. Thanks, Gemma. So from a probity perspective, it's just recognising that the project puts in place uh, probity practices to ensure uh, that there is an ethical, transparent and equitable process for all potential proponents. But in recognising that, um, those uh, potential proponents need to ensure that you understand and respect the rules of that process. And that includes things like um, maintaining compliance with any specified confidentiality requirements, uh, declaring any actual potential perceived conflicts of interests, and where you do, any proposed management plans. It's also ensuring that you engage with the state um, through any approved and documented channels. And finally, just avoiding any unlawful collusion or anti-competitive conduct. How do you, Sam? Thanks, Paul. That's great. Uh, so. Thanks very much everyone for joining us and we do appreciate many of you are joining us from different time zones and uh, you giving up your time during your day to participate in the session with us today. So just to quickly recap um, why we're here and what brings us to this point today, South Australia is a, a global leader in renewable energy. Um, we've been on a journey over the last 15 years which has taken us from uh, nothing to 69% renewable energy use in our state. 40% of our homes have rooftop solar, which is uh, a very exciting opportunity and obviously is also uh, provides a range of uh, challenges with the grid and that's partly where we can utilise hydrogen facilities, which we'll get into a bit later. Uh, we're also home to Australia's largest operational hydrogen electrolyzer. So if we just uh, move through, I guess, just around the, the project objectives, and these won't be unfamiliar to you, particularly all the people that are engaged in the market sounding, but it is a hydrogen jobs plan. Um, the creation of jobs for South Australian is front for South Australians is front and centre of what we're trying to achieve. We are looking to enhance South Australia's grid security through new dispatchable power generation, which is touching on the point made about the rooftop solar. We have particular challenges in South Australia, not only around peak demand but also around minimum demand. And having a large flexible load that electrolyzer can provide is a very helpful thing for us in managing that grid security in South Australia. We really want to prove out the hydrogen production and generation technology at scale. We want to help to unlock South Australia's pipeline of renewable energy. 
Um, we have coincident wind and solar resources in the Upper Spencer Gulf, but really across regions in South Australia, which have enabled that transition to that high penetration of renewables. But there are far more projects out there than we could use for our local domestic energy use here. And so what we're looking to do is how can we bring those developments on and, and capture the associated manufacturing opportunities and supply chain opportunities that come with those. And hydrogen provides a pathway for that for us. And obviously this is about supporting South Australia's continued clean energy transition and the decarbonisation of industry in South Australia. So if we move into the request for proposal um, and the scope, so the government of South Australia has committed $593 million Australian dollars in capital funding. The minimum project to scope that we have defined in the request for proposal is 250 megawatts of hydrogen production, 200 megawatts of hydrogen powered generation, the supporting hydrogen storage infrastructure to enable that to operate. It needs to be operational by December 2025. Uh, and we've identified some land parcels in the Whaler area. And we'll touch on some of these things a bit more through the presentation. But importantly, the RFP seeks submissions against this minimum project scope, but it does also encourage industry to put forward opportunities that either leverage this minimum scope or provide alternative options that have potential to realise further benefits for South Australia. So um, in terms of the, a little bit more about the scope, we are looking for industry partners there to deliver this plan. We're focusing on the supply, construction, operation of the hydrogen plant and equipment. We also have a call in here for hydrogen offtake, which we'll touch on again a bit later, um, which follows on from the interest we've had in the market sounding process. And importantly, we've excluded a number of activities that are being progressed separately by our team in government, including the supply and transmission of power and water uh, and natural gas, if that is required. So just a quick refresher, I guess, on the packages. I don't think we need to go through them line by line. Um, they're very clearly detailed in the RFP documentation, but there's the eight packages there. And as we come to the end of the, well, the, the second half, if you like, of the presentation today, we'll touch on a few different things about some of those packages that we wanted to highlight. Uh, the first thing we did want to touch on, though, is the project delivery timeframe. So the South Australian government is targeting the delivery of hydrogen production and power generation capacity by December 2025. So that is a deliberately ambitious timeframe. We are conscious of that, but we are continuing to strive towards that. So really the purpose of that is around enabling us to capture the benefits that come with being a first mover. So we want to have the largest hydrogen production and hydrogen power generation facilities in the world operating in South Australia. We want to do that so that we can attract as much of that supply chain, as much of the ongoing maintenance and services associated with that to South Australia. So we can build on that renewable energy advantage we have and turn it into an industrial advantage for our state. So timing is important and it will be a critical factor in our evaluation. Having said that, it is important to clarify that it's one of you know, a range of several criteria that we have. So a proposal that does not result in all the capacity being commissioned by December 2025 may not, in isolation, result in an unsuccessful bid. So if you are thinking of a phasing or something like that being proposed, then it needs to be clearly defined. The objective is to have the entire facility up and running by December 2025. If your proposal is different to that, then you need to clearly outline that and the pathway to that full production. So we'll move through to some of the contributions from my colleagues here shortly, but jobs and local industry are a priority here. So what we in the RFP have on Schedule 8, um, we require respondents to address the inclusion of small to medium local contracts to add value to the South Australian supply chain. So we are deliberately focusing on trying to provide work for local small to medium businesses, and that will be a factor in our evaluation also. So in terms of this, and, and this is where Philip and Eddie will talk in a bit more detail about how we might be able to help you, but there is goods and services requirements for the project that are separate to the RFP published on Tenders SA and, uh, and reach out if you have any issues finding that, but it should be fairly straightforward. Um, proponents need to submit a tailored industry participation plan that Philip's about to talk us through and Industry Capability Network South Australia provides a service to support project proponents seeking to engage these local suppliers and Eddie's going to um, talk to us about how that operates. So I'll hand over to Philip to talk us through the tailored industry participation plan. 
So the Office of the Industry Advocate is tasked with maximising the Malinowskis Labor government's priority to grow the economy and to create jobs through increasing the number and diversity of South Australian businesses participating and also winning state-funded projects. We also seek to drive local investment and also create really strong value chains throughout the government's entire contracting. So the South Australian Industry Participation Policy, for which our office has responsibility, is designed to deliver economic benefit to the state by promoting employment for South Australian residents, South Australian investment and capital expenditure that builds capability in the South Australian economy. We also look to create opportunities for South Australian-based businesses and also supply chains that employ South Australian people and continue to invest in the state. So the South Australian Industry Participation Policy uses a weighted system that, which balances the economic benefit to the state as part of the holistic value for money assessment. So this slide illustrates where the Office of the Industry Advocate fits within the procurement process for the Hydrogen Jobs Plan. So our office has worked with the Office of, the Hyd of Hydrogen Power South Australia to develop a comprehensive, fit-for-purpose, tailored industry participation plan approach to this project, and that considers both the government's election commitments and also the requirements of the South Australian Industry Participation Policy. So the request for proposal tender pack uh, contained a copy of the tailored industry participation plan, which I will cover in the next slide. However, during the live tender period, all bidders will be required to complete and also submit a tailored industry participation plan as part of the mandatory returnable schedules. So pre-award uh, and under the Industry Advocate Act 2017, it provides an opportunity for our office to review all the tailored industry participation plans and potentially negotiate commitments made by shortlisted contractors. Therefore, it's important that you are clear about the commitments made as post-contract award, our office monitors all the tailored industry participation commitments, which we contract conditions reportable to our office every six months for the contract duration. So it's important that you understand that the tailored industry participation plan carries a 20% weighting for the evaluation criteria. Therefore, it's important that you understand and consider all opportunities to demonstrate how you will maximise South Australian economic benefit in all the categories identified within the document. So whilst we understand there'll be some plant and equipment that will be sourced internationally, the tailored industry participation plan is designed to get bidders to explore all options and provide South Australian businesses and contractors the opportunity to participate. Therefore, consider elements of the design and specification which can be delivered within the state. So the hydrogen jobs plan by its very name describes the government's intent to create employment for South Australians and opportunities for skills development. All of the tailored industry participation sections, uh, which are identified on, in blue font on this slide, all have a score allocation and therefore will provide a clear understanding of where the government has placed its emphasis for the evaluation. So you'll also note that there's been tailored industry participation plan supply guidelines provided to assist your organisations in completing this document. However, if there are questions relating to the tailored industry participation plan, please make a formal representation to the official contract officer uh, within the Hydrogen Power SA team. Just one final note, our uh, website also hosts what we call the South Australian Products and Services Register, which identifies a number of South Australian based businesses across the board, across a broad section of industry sectors. So this could potentially be a good resource in the development of your bid. Thank you. Thanks, Philip. That's great. And now hand over to Eddie to talk about the Industry Capability Network. Thank you, Sam. Um, so, yeah, so Sam said I represent the Industry Capability Network and we're probably more a better known under our acronym ICN. Our organisation uh, offers a service to project proponents and their lead contractors essentially to build, uh, assist them to build local supply chains. We, as a national network, we operate a system, a, a web-based platform called the ICN Gateway. This is essentially a database of company capabilities. We have a approximately 80,000 Australian companies listed on the database currently, of which uh, around 5,000 have a location here in South Australia. Through that ICN gateway, we also can facilitate expressions of interest on behalf of uh, project proponents, uh, inviting local businesses to register interest against specific uh, subcontract opportunities prior to going to tender. Separate to the South Australian Hydrogen Jobs Plan, um, ICN here in SA is undertaking a supply chain study. To inform that, we've published a, a portal on the ICN gateway simply called the Hydrogen um, Supply Chains. 
and um, invited local businesses to register and highlight uh, their particular capabilities, ultimately to identify uh, current capabilities and potential capabilities here in this state um, to, fill, to fulfill um, the hydrogen supply chains. Uh, with that um, context, there's a couple of services that we can offer to uh, organisations that intend to respond to the um, RFP for the hydrogen jobs plan. Our services are fully subsidised by state government. We are a business unit within the Department for Industry, Innovation and Science. So as outlined in the RFP document, respondents can have a list of businesses that have registered interest through the, the hydrogen supply chains portal on ICN Gateway. But however, if you have more specific requirements and you are looking for potential suppliers to engage for those subcontract opportunities, uh, we can undertake conf confidential searches of uh, local businesses uh, based on your criteria. A bit further down the track, um, for those organisations that are successful on this project, we can offer them a bespoke uh, project portal. So you can invite local businesses publicly to register interest against any subcontract opportunities that you have, um, any requirements you have um, to fulfil the project. So those details are included in the RFP document of how you can engage that process. Thank you. Great, thanks very much, Eddie. So what we'll do now is I'll just run through some of the things that we've pulled out that we wanted to talk a little bit more about from the RFP uh, packages. So just in terms of land, um, the government's worked closely with the Wailo City Council and the Bungalow Determination Aboriginal Corporation to secure land options for the project. So these land options are a suitable scale in the right location and the sort of land that we need to be able to deliver the project. So they're allocated, outlined there on the map, they're in the documentation and proponents, I guess importantly, proponents may also propose alternative sites that can support the delivery of the project by December 2025. So we have these sites here, but we are, um, we are happy to look at other sites that are proposed. So just in terms of the, the, those three sites uh, in and around Wyala, we've lined up some dates, Thursday the 9th of February and Wednesday the 15th of February for site visits. So the site visits will solely be about providing an introduction to the Wyala region, local infrastructure and environment, and we'll be working closely with the Wyala City Council to do that. I very much appreciate their help and involvement. So the site visit is not compulsory, but it's important to point out that no additional discussion around the project or the RFP process will be happening. All of that information is contained in the RFP documents or presented today in our, in our information session. But the registration details are uploaded to uh, now on the tenders website. We'd very much appreciate if you are interested in registering early so we can manage uh, the logistics and, and get that up and running. It, as we've said, not compulsory, but if you are interested at looking at that land, then um, this is a good opportunity to do that. So in terms of um, technology, proponents can put forward solutions to one or more packages that meet or exceed the minimum project scope, which is defined, as we've talked about earlier, around the 250 megawatts of hydrogen production, the 200 megawatts of hydrogen power generation, and the hydrogen storage infrastructure that's required to support those facilities. So. The request for proposals is technology neutral. All feasible generation, production and storage technologies can be proposed and will be evaluated. Evaluation will include consideration of cost, benefit, technical readiness level, efficiency and other relevant factors which influence long-term value to the state. Just some clarification around the modelling that we provided as well. Firstly, um, it is indicative modelling. It's one scenario. It was used as an example. It is certainly not meant to be a blueprint for how the facilities will operate. Based, it's based on, in this example that we've provided, a 200 megawatt open cycle gas turbine power station running on green hydrogen produced by a 200 megawatt electrolyzer, which equates to an 80% efficiency of a 250 megawatt electrolyzer. Uh, it's optimised for operation based on the forecast spot market electricity prices in South Australia. The modelling reflects the operation of a peaking plant in South Australia's high renewables penetration electricity market, which provides power to the South Australian grids at time of, times of high demand. Proposals that can contribute to meeting this demand, but also contribute to other power generation profiles, for example, baseload, are welcome. So the modelling is not intended to indicate a technology preference. Proposals involving alternative technologies or a mix of technologies are welcome. Larger options can also be proposed. Now we'll just touch on the 
operating objectives. Um, so the hydrogen power station uh, will be operated to provide renewable energy firming services um, and consequently measurable benefits to industrial customers. So the focus will be on lowering prices for industrial customers by firming the renewable energy generation that we have in South Australia. The intention is for the hydrogen production facility to obviously provide hydrogen that can be used for that power generation, but to also be able to produce more hydrogen than is required for that. And that will enable us to have hydrogen that we can use to supply to industry and start to grow the use of hydrogen in the South Australian economy. So in combination, the operation of these facilities is focused on accelerating the decarbonisation of the South Australian industry. But specific details on how the hydrogen power station, hydrogen production facilities will be operated are currently still being worked through and determined. We've got concurrent work streams, which is not surprising given the timeframes we're working to um, for this project. Uh, and so we are, we are likely to be able to determine that, finalise that operating model in collaboration with successful proponent or proponents. So th a little bit more about this commercial strategy and value for money section. So the government is seeking to maximise the benefits of its capital investment and demonstrate at this scalable green hydrogen opportunity. So low cost production of high green hydrogen is, is very clearly the objective. And then the subsequent storage and use of that green hydrogen for significant green hydrogen fuel power station, but also to catalyse those associated hydrogen industry jobs, investment and export opportunities. OPSA will consider alternative options put forward by industry partners that are aligned with project objectives and can provide greater value to South Australia. Just a little bit more specific now around some of the schedules in that section and, and how, um, how they should be looked at. So I guess we're steering you in the direction of a few of these schedules for uh, quite deliberately. So Schedule 10 of the RFP contains important instructions for proponents. It's designed to work in concert with Schedule 8, which relates to delivery and enables the proponent to do a couple of things. One, specify how they propose to deliver one or more of the technical packages and specify the relevant proposed site location or locations, which I guess collectively we can call is the proposed solution. So a proposal may, but does not need to, include more than one proposed solution or one option. So where a proposal includes more than one option, the preferred option should be clearly identified. So what we're saying is we are happy with people putting in multiple options on how packages can be met. We're just keen to understand their priority and preference for those options. Schedule 10 of a proposal must also contain details of any additional commitments beyond the scope of the options included in the proposal that might contribute to achieving the hydrogen jobs plan objectives. So if there are other things that you are thinking that you can contribute, obviously they're captured through that tailored industry participation plan, but Schedule 10 is where we would like to see them included as well so they can be evaluated. So for example, just example, but for example, they could include you know, on-site and or behind the meter renewable electricity generation, subsequent expansion stages, additional projects at other locations that contribute to the project objectives. So I guess if you have a broader plan for South Australia, this is the place where we want you to include those details. Moving on to hydrogen offtake. So through the market sounding process, we were very um, encouraged by the number of people that wanted to talk to us about the use of hydrogen in South Australia. So South Australian industry is strongly encouraged to consider when and how it might seek to incorporate specified volumes of green hydrogen into its existing or new activities. And if they are thinking about that, then we're keen to understand that. It may not be that that is from, you know, 2026 timeframe, but we are keen to understand when that would be used and required and the volumes, et cetera. So if hydrogen offtake or another offtake is proposed, um, Schedule 8 of the proposal must include detailed information about the safe, efficient, effective offtake and transfer of hydrogen and oxygen. Therefore, how are you going to take the hydrogen from our facility and, and get it to where you're looking to use it, hydrogen and or oxygen, and then what are you obviously going to use that for? And Schedule 10 is where details around the proponent's proposed commercial terms including price and certification requirements um, would be included. You know, we are looking for as much detail as we can get. We understand that some of this is forward looking uh, and there may not be you know, detail, but um, I guess we are encouraging you to put forward as much detail as you have about that opportunity and use so that we can then look to see how we evaluate that and tailor the facilities we're building to be able to hopefully accommodate the offtake required by industry in South Australia. 
So just a little bit more around the process side of things. So section eight of the request for proposal provides instructions about the specific documentation required to be submitted with a proposal. So again, we're steering you to those two schedules, um, to section eight here and the schedules we mentioned earlier. This includes information about the schedules that need to be completed for a proposed proposal and all proposed solutions or options. So understanding these requirements is particularly important for organisations that are submitting more than one option or proposed solution or organisations that have partnered with another organisation or organisations to submit a proposal as part of a consortia. So section eight is important for those particular organisations. Finally, evaluation. So just to map out, I guess, some high level thinking about the evaluation, it will be a multi-stage process along the lines of the initial assessment being around response compliance, financial and organisational viability. We'll look at assessment of technical viability, risk and deliverability, and then assessment of commercial models, proposed, proposed commercial models and alignment with project objectives. Uh, and then the interactive evaluation and negotiation process will continue from there. So we are working to tight timeframes. We will be looking to utilize the information you provide us uh, to go through this evaluation process. So it is important to be clear that we will not be, uh, it's not our current intention to run a multi-stage process where we have this RFP and then we come out with another and then we come out with another. We are looking to use the information provided by you in this submission to be able to do our evaluation on how we move forward with the delivery of this project. So the things that we will be in terms of evaluation criteria uh, around commercial and organisational, engineering and technical, deliverability, partnership potential and the value to South Australia. So we've obviously issued the RFP, we've got the briefing today that we're, we're in at the moment. We have the site visits we've talked about for the 9th and 15th of February. We've been getting a large number of queries and questions that we are looking to turn around and get back out as quickly as possible. We would like to have, or we're going to close off that process as of five o'clock on the 1st of March to enable us to be ready for the next stage around our evaluation. Submissions close on the 14th of March, five o'clock. Um, our evaluation and negotiation we are looking to do uh, between March and June. So I guess this is forecasting that should you be successful in moving through the process, we would like you to be ready to be able to move quickly and invest the time required with us to be able to get through that um, evaluate that sort of evaluation negotiation phase in a fairly quick time frame. So we will be working at pace through that process um, with the objective still to be awarding by July this year because we need to obviously start work at the back end of this year with our objective in less than three years to have the facilities up and running. So we are uh, I guess just forecasting there that um, we would appreciate you thinking about those timeframes and being able to work with us in that sort of collaborative way as we move through the process.